This episode of TechZilla is sponsored by Bank of America, Netflix, and GoDaddy.com. Coming up on this episode, does Veronica have a new job? Is she leaving us? Ah! Hold on, we got all the details in just a minute. Plus we got the Netflix Roku media player in-house. Does it live up to the hype? We're gonna let you know. And can you actually repair, or maybe should you even try to repair an iPhone yourself? Find out the answers to these confounding questions and quite a bit more. Just heat up some cheese, empty out a bag of tortilla chips and get your dip in hand ready cause the Techzilla starts now. Welcome to the Texilla. I'm Veronica Belmont. And I'm Patrick Norton. Where did the Texilla You said come it from? first, not me. I think Roger wrote it. Roger. Like the Texilla. The Texilla? It's good. And Texilla? I think they're both good. They're both acceptable. What is the plural of Texilla? Tex, uh, a murder of Texillas. <laughs> We've Texilla. got a, <laughs> a horrible mangling of grammar aside. we got a really good show lined up for you today. Indeed. But first things first, you, you're working for NASA? No, I'm working. In the future. In the future? No, actually just at Future, Future US, the publishing company. Yeah, see how we, we did that? That was funny, right? That's yeah, clever. so apparently, I'm, I'm not leaving Techzilla, just so you guys okay. know. Way to panic everyone in your intro, by the way. Yeah, I bet really, they're downloading all those older episodes right now. That was good, <laughs> that was real good. Yeah, so when I'm not hanging out at the Rev3 offices, I'm working over at Future US and shooting for the new show, Core. Um, it's super fun. Q-O-R-E. Q-O-R-E, not Q-U-R-E. So I don't want to hear any like more. Like hardcore, wicked hardcore. <laughs> wicked hardcore. Mm -hmm. Got my so, skelly cap on. You got your skelly cap. <laughs> I'm just... That, I'm mangling that. Anyhow. We're playing Dorchester next week. <laughs> Worcester. <laughs> I'm playing the Palladium in Worcester, Mass. Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so I get to talk about like awesome PS3 games and talk to cool developers and travel all over the place, and like it's it. really fun. Links back at veronicabelmont.com? Yeah, yeah, I've got all the info up on my website, veronicabelmont.com. Will there be Twitter com. updates? There will be Twitter updates. Twitter.com slash veronicabelmont. There will, yes. <laughs> I'll get you, Dvorak, I'll get you yet. <laughs> So how do people get it? We can download it on the PlayStation Store. It's just like a game. It's two dollars and ninety-nine cents. But we've got like forty minutes of totally original video content. You can get like betas and demos and all sorts oh, cool. of stuff you can't get anywhere else. It's not just a video. It's like a club for PS3 it's owners. It's like for hardcore PS3 fans. Hardcore. <laughs> See how we did that? Yeah. So if you want more info, you can check it out on my blog because I've got links to all the stuff you need to know over there. VeronicaBelmont.com. VeronicaBelmont.com. It's fun. Right. Email questions? Email questions would be excellent. The first email comes to us from Jorge, and Jorge has a question about archiving his VHS tapes. He writes, I just had a quick question about moving family videos from VHS to DVD format. What is the best method in terms of time, efficiency, and output video quality? Well, there's a few different ways you can go about it. Yeah, absolutely. Generally speaking, you're probably going to use a PC. There's some standalone devices we'll talk about in a second. So a PC or a Mac, and you're going to need a capture device into your computer. And the nice thing about using your computer is you can edit the video. So you can take out the 22 minutes of, like, you know, maybe that your kid was videotaping grass before the soccer game instead of having the 22 minutes exactly. you're fast-forwarding in for the rest of his natural life or her natural life. Um, and you're going to need editing software. What's nice, you've got uh, iMovie on the Mac. You've got Media Movie Maker, yeah, on Windows, Windows Movie XP. Maker. Mm -hmm. Vista even has a DVD authoring tool. Um, and actually, one of the easiest ways to do it, if you have a mini DV camcorder, or if you have a camcorder that has an analog pass through, basically analog input and FireWire out to your PC, um, you can actually use it as the capture device, which is really nice. And usually, the quality is really, really good. Yeah, and you can add like spiffy titles and that kind of thing, like you yeah. mentioned, and you get to edit the past. Edit Which is very past. nice. That's and burn the VHS tapes that you don't want to look at ever again. That's a really scary concept. Yeah, anyhow, another method, you could use a set-top DVD recorder like we talked about. Right. Phillips made those forever. Mm -hmm. our, our producer, Roger Chang, actually is in love with light-on. They make these set-top boxes. Uh, the LVC 9006 is one of them. And Great it's name. basically, um, you know, it's a little box. It looks like a DVD and a slightly DVD player in a slightly bigger box. VHS output, input, and it just takes the entire video and dumps it onto a DVD. Right, it just dumps directly, dubs directly, not dumps. <laughs> it dumps and dumps. Not the prettiest uh, menuing system, but it works and it's really easy. And the video quality is actually shocking. Yeah, yeah. and then frighteningly, you can send it to like Costco or yeah. something if you don't mind people seeing your, your super secret VHS tapes or anything. I, I trust the people at Costco, just but. Pay them to do it. Commercial services, though, if you don't have a lot of time, you have a lot of videotapes, it's definitely something worth looking at. 
that. And chances are they may, you know, actually, as I say, like Pinnacle, Dazzle by Pinnacle actually mm -hmm. is another one. It's like 50 or $100, depending on which model you get. They're all really good. So you don't really have to spend much money to get good results, as long as your VHS isn't too trashed. Oh, and clean the heads on your VHS, because you probably haven't cleaned them in like That's four true. years. That's true. They've probably been sitting in the bottom of your closet for the past... 10 years. <laughs> Anyhow, it's time now for a message from one of today's sponsors, Bank of America. What do you use for protection? <laughs> I don't use protection, to be honest with you. You don't have Right, yeah, no. Generation <laughs> Z is just out of control. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. Today's selection, free snap. Normally, if you want to change the size of a window on your desktop, you have to mouse over and grab it by the end and pull it out. While it may not seem like a big deal for just one, when you've got to do it for every fracking window, it gets old, real old. Enter FreeSnap, the app that lets you quickly move and resize windows. Once installed and running, FreeSnap lets you use the Windows key in combination with select keys to move, center, and resize your windows. That website getting cut off because the window doesn't extend down to the bottom of the screen? Windows plus down arrow will open up that screen. Need to center your window? Try the Windows key plus C. Of course, that's not all. You also have the ability to move windows to one of the four corners of your screen, shrink or expand your window. So if you're looking for a faster way to pry open or shrink those ubiquitous windows on your desktop that keeps your hands on the keyboard, then give FreeSnap a try. All right, Veronica, you ready for some more questions? I am indeed. Our next email seems to be a pretty popular question, judging by our inbox, but Santi sums it up pretty nicely in his email. He writes, I was wondering if you could do a product review on the Netflix Roku machine. How does it stack up to Apple TV, Vudu, etc.? Santi. Well, you know, ever since Netflix and Roku released that set-top box of theirs, everybody's been wanting us to do a hands-on with it. They've just been clamoring for it. Clamoring. Clamoring, and we fought tooth and nail to bring it to you. We begged, we pleaded, we We begged, whined. we actually did. But I understand, yeah, <laughs> that you managed to get a whole weekend with the thing, Pat. Our products acquisition maven, Grace, got one, and this is the Roku box itself. It's a little square, kind of looks like a flat, Kleenex box, a little short Kleenex it's box. It's also really light. And it's really silent because there's no fans inside it's of it. It's a little bottom heavy because of the yeah, cables. Yeah, the cables are dragging them back. There's no hard drive inside of it. It streams everything over the internet. So, you know, if, join us for a moment looking at a PC or a Mac window. You're on Netflix. You pick stuff in your instant queue and you basically stack up. I've had like 17 or 18 movies stacked up. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any sort of end to it. And when you fire up the <laughs> Roku box, which is a slippery little bugger. They'll never send us anything again. <laughs> it's a hundred dollar box and it's impossible to kill. The uh, basically, you go to the home menu on the remotes, and I'm going to click these in, and you get a bunch of movie options. They are pretty much all SD. Oh, um, there's my favorite. The Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints Hopefully is my favorite movie. <laughs> Hopefully, it's in a part that won't make any of the small children run screaming. Upset to their mothers that and would fathers. Be bad. So basically what you're watching right now is it's queuing up, it's streaming over the internet, and here we go, it's retrieving. So this is basically queuing the video. It's basically grabbing video off their servers, queuing it up on the processor locally, and boom. Is there any problem Boom. with buffering once you start playing it? No, I actually didn't run into any problems. I've got a, a Comcast cable connection. It worked out pretty well. Um, I know some people with DSL that are using these. It doesn't take a particularly huge connection. What's interesting, though, is let's go into pause. Um, when you're fast forwarding and rewinding, so I'm going to hit the rewind button here. And instead of sort of holding it down and getting a video stream, it basically skips frames. Like it has cached frames. In a really long movie, mm -hmm. it may not have a lot of the frames cached if you're trying to fast forward all the way through it. So does that mean you can't get an exact location to rewind to? It's actually pretty exact. It's like these are, you know, if I'm going in here. Or is it more exact because it's frame by frame as opposed to guessing work? I'm going to say I'm a little undecided on that. Yeah. I didn't have any problems finding what I wanted going frame by frame. Um, it's when you want to actually leap forward like halfway through the movie mm -hmm. that it takes a little, you and it's one of those things where you hold it down, then it starts throttling through faster. In a couple seconds, like all of a sudden, there should be three arrows, and it'll start leaping. What do you think about the quality of the image? Now, Boondock Saints is probably not the best example of the quality right. on this thing because they have. It's not an HD movie that I recall. No, it's like older, old, too old. It doesn't really look that great on DVD anyway. To well, start it's, with. it's not a great transfer, but he, he, there's something that's kind of. Let's let's take a step back from that for a moment. Oh, we'll answer the we'll answer the quality question in just a moment. Weird. So it's oh, got weird. a pretty easy remote control, mm -hmm. pretty easy basically menuing. You 
you are going to need a PC or a Mac to queue up your um, video on that one. Where it gets interesting is in the selection of movies. One of the amazing things about Netflix, and I know they're a sponsor, but they have every freaking movie on the planet. You may have to wait a couple days for some of the more obscure things, but they have an insane selection. That's the whole point, right? Not leaving your house, insane selection. For the instant queue stuff, it's like maybe 10% of their total titles are available, and I think 10% is being generous. I noticed that, yeah. It's not HD, it's SD, it's um, of sort of standards that are all over the place. Mm -hmm. There's some really good stuff on there. I found like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, you know, personal favorite. They've got Blade Runner in here, Mean Girls. Hey, if you're a fan of obscure, you oh, know, look, it's Lady Hawk. 80 movies, you know. <laughs> and Lady Hawk is awesome, you know, Legends of the Fall, Gattaca, so there's some good stuff on Ooh, there. They've got a bunch of television series. They've got a lot of television series. shows, I did notice that. Um, now, the quality, it varies. Most of it's it's pretty watchable. It's, this is a 1080p screen, it's like a 50-inch 1080p screen, and you definitely start to see things kind of start look ooky. Because mm -hmm. um, this stuff is basically, their SD transfers, uh, most people, the general consensus is are a little lower than DVD quality. Or if you're watching stuff, is it enjoyable? Yeah, if it's three in the morning, you don't wanna leave your house, it's amazing. If it's two in the afternoon, you don't wanna leave your house and nothing good is on <laughs> HBO. Cause mm -hmm. nothing, you know, HBO, amazing stuff at eight in the morning, amazing stuff at eight at night, big empty space in between, it's great. What this desperately needs is more content. And HD content. And HD content. And I don't know, the other thing it also needs, subtitles would be great, and 5.1 support on the audio output would be nice, because right um. now it is HDMI, component output, S-video output, um, so it's basically, it'll support your standard definition TV, something Apple TV definitely will not. Um, component, uh, we've got audio out rigged up to some speakers because we have no uh, HDMI audio on this monitor. But what's interesting, right, is that it's my understanding, I haven't, it's my understanding all the video now is stereo, mm -hmm. no 5.1, no surround sound. Um, quality, it varies. So what do you, what do you think this is kind of catering to? I mean, it's obviously <coughs> not really a well, high-end piece you're of home equipment. You're paying like 18 bucks a month for an unlimited Netflix account. That means you can watch any video available in the instant queue anytime you want. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as nobody cuts your, your internet connection, you can watch these videos, right? And you're basically playing a flat rate. That means, you know, you have a few hundred or a few thousand videos you can watch for your $18 a month. If Apple TV, if Voodoo, if Voodoo had a flat fee, right, the Voodoo box we showed you on the very first episode of Techzilla, right? They have a few thousand movies. They've got a lot of first-run features. There's, like, no first-run features on this. Yeah. That sucks. But if you look at something like the Voodoo, where you watch 10 movies, that's at least $30, $40 in charges a month, you know, on top of the $400 cost of the machine, right? True, it's kind of the same with Apple TV. I mean, Apple yeah. TV is a little bit more expensive, obviously, and then movies, HD movies are $4.99 a download. And this is all you can eat. You're paying, you know, it's basically, you've got your DVDs showing up, right? Mm -hmm. you, if you're paying for unlimited, you basically, as fast as you can turn to your DVDs back around in Netflix, they'll send more DVDs to you, and you can basically download an unlimited number of movies on this with the unlimited limited subscription on Netflix. That aspect of it is awesome. That's the way it should be done. That is the just, you know, you don't have to worry about your six-year-old downloading 42 Disney movies. But that's fun. Well, it's, it's fun, <laughs> right? Until you get I'm the bill, joking. right? Because Well, if right. you start watching, you know, if I start watching a movie on this and I wait two days before I finish it, I'm not paying another $4 because my 24-hour right. rental period right. is that's over. That's true. That's a big, big downside you know, to things so, like Apple TV. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's it, there's some stuff, you know, I like that aspect. It's very thrifty. So bottom, bottom line, line, you know, it's a hundred bucks if you're a Netflix user and you want a much more convenient way to get, uh, you know, instant queue movies onto your television. It's awesome if you want to be able to stream, you know, your ten thousand, you know, DVDs that you've put on a hard drive and you have on your local server and network. It's useless. It's a basically it's a dedicated set top box. The interface is pretty clean. It takes a little getting used to that whole sort of skipping around fast forward thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I should say that you know, here we go. There's the the fast super fast forward version of it. It's, but it's, you know, is it usable? Eminently. Could the video quality be better? Yes. Do they need HD content? So does Apple TV, so does Voodoo. Everybody needs more HD content. Is this watchable? Absolutely. Is it cheap? Absolutely. Um, I'd like to see them open it up so to, to do some sort of non, um, you know, non -streaming Netflix. Non-streaming type thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not so worried about the non-streaming so much as I am about being able to play content that you have locally on your network. That would be really cool. Apparently they got like two more versions of this coming out that might be added onto it. Um, but basically, if you're not interested in Netflix or you don't see movies you want in the Netflix queue, the instant Netflix queue, it's not so useful. 
All right. Before we move on, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Remember, these are the folks that make these episodes possible. Without them, we can't bring you your weekly Texilla fix. Who is it? GoDaddy.com. Get reliable, secure web hosting without the long-term contract. GoDaddy's hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99% uptime, free 24-7 support, and no annual commitment. I like that thought. And keep personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public databases. That means out of the public eye. Now, if you enter in code TECH2, that's T-E-K-2, when you check out, you can save an additional $5 off any order of $30 or more. Some restrictions apply. See the site for details. Do us a favor. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. Support us by supporting them. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website we can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. Today's pick, AppleTVJunkie.com. Enthusiast sites love them. I've learned more about modding my cell phones than my service providers would ever want me to know from Howard Forums. And when I'm buying something new for the home theater system, a trip to the AVS forum is mandatory, even though I don't always take the advice. But all too often, enthusiast sites dedicated to a single product have an entry or two, then lie fallow, empty, useless. Apple TV Junkie isn't that kind of site. Eddie Valenzuela and his San Diego crew keep the updates coming on this blog dedicated to, well, duh, the Apple TV. There aren't nearly enough movies available to rent or buy on the Apple TV, but the Apple TV Junkies start with the Apple TV Junkie HD movie list. It adds every new title as it becomes available, along with info on the genre, the rating, if Dolby Digital Surround is available, and the release date. They also keep you up to date on the latest 99 cent movies of the week and the newest rentals. It's the place I found out about the Apple TV hack on a stick from Apple Core and when the Apple TV hack on a stick was taken off the market and when it was available once again. Hey, Eddie, how about some more Apple TV hacks coverage on the site? Everybody else, if you're a heavy Apple TV user, this is one site that's definitely worth checking out. All right, Pat, you're ready for some more questions? Absolutely. I can't say that anymore. <laughs> we have a video question from James. Roll it, James. Hey, Patrick and Veronica. I dropped my iPhone today. It has a nice little crack in it. I want to know if it's worth it to fix it myself or order a kit or send it to Apple. If it is unlocked, so I don't know if they'd accept it, but I don't know what to do. It still works, but, you know, your advice would help. So James wants to crack open the old iPhone, or rather, is already cracked and he's just trying to fix it. And should I want a pony. It? Yeah. It's nice to want things, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> should he fix it himself or should he send it to Apple? Okay, it's unlocked. It's unlocked. First of all, don't worry about that. Basically, the, the technical phrase for it is, you know, virginizing or re-virginizing your phone. Before you send it back to Sounds Apple, hot. yes, do that. Well, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> rude. Um, one of the things is AT&T does not do the $5 a month insurance on the iPhone. They do on every other phone where you basically go, go run over by a truck and they give you a new phone, which stinks because these phones are very, very expensive. Two, this is... Just one small, this is basically the screen and bezel of the inside of an iPhone. Oh, and actually, horror. hold on, hold on. Oh, let, let me get the rest eyes, of my box I can't here. see it. So, it burns. And this is the sort of, this is the, the basically the uh, wireless module, which has the battery soldered to it. And here's where your little card slides in. And here's the camera module. It's also oh, cute. It's so cute. It and is cute. Let me see that. It's actually really crazy. Uh, this up here in the corner here, they all the switches are pre-wired together, except for the main switch on the screen, um, with the um, jack for your headset, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm pointing all of this out is because it took 16 screws and about 25 minutes. And these are, you know, I dropped one of the screws in here. I was going to show it to you guys, and I'm never going to find it on this floor. Done for. Um, and the nice thing about this one is because uh, our friend Tim Moynihan, had basically, I think he was... Uh, uh, intoxicated and bored and basically tried to pry open his iPhone to get at the memory chips inside of it. Um, you have to start by inserting basically a knife through here to pop two clips here. And the next step is to going to be actually to pop it back here. Then you remove the first four tiny screws which go in down here. And then things get really ugly because you basically have to remove the side of the case by undoing, I think there's one side of it left. Uh, you can see where he sort of pried this one open. Tim, you're a wild man. Um, to undo, ah, here we go, uh, these clips, which look kind of like this over here. And it's literally one of the worst 
products to take apart to do yourself ever. Yeah, they don't want you to do that, do no. they? No. No, they're not going to make it easy. TechRestore.com had a great deal, which seems to be down at the moment. I think they were using uh, used screens. For 150 bucks. they would replace the screen on your iPod. They don't have it up on their website right now, hoping it's coming back, because that is the flat-out best deal out there. Spending like 270 bucks with Apple, not the best deal out there, but a heck of a lot better than going to uh, a parts store. Um, or spending buying a, a new iPhone. Yeah, buying a new iPhone. We can't even buy a new iPhone right now, because there don't seem to be any models anywhere. Um, till to, next week. Till, yeah, till next and week. And they'll or, be new. Or the, or the end of the month, actually. It depends on Possibly when they actually with 3G. release it. Yeah. But it's, uh, it is the single most miserable thing I have taken apart in you forever. You know what? Come to think of it, brilliant idea. Just wait for the announcement, and then everyone's going to be selling their old iPhones <laughs> for like 100 bucks because they'll want to get rid of them so they can get the new one. I bet if you wait a week, if you wait till after the WWDC announcement, which I promise you will come, People are going to be selling these things on <laughs> Craigslist and eBay like there's no tomorrow. And then you'll be able to get a relatively cheap, if not pretty damn cheap, iPhone. It won't be 3G and it won't be GPS or whatever else right. they're planning to put in there for the but next version. But it will actually have a usable screen. But it will have a usable screen. That's what you need. Yeah, because right now, to basically, they you can buy the screen and uh, touchscreen unit. Mm -hmm. It's 170 bucks, 160, 150. We'll put a link up to this. There's, there's a PDA Parts is a place. Uh, that does a pretty good job of it and they don't overcharge. Don't buy them. People are selling used screens for like 250 bucks on eBay. Uh-uh. You can buy nice, fresh, unused screens for like 150, 170 bucks from reputable stores. But I gotta say, this is a miserable, miserable, miserable project. Well, your, um, your misery is other people's fun. So who knows? Maybe he <laughs> likes that kind of thing. If you like that kind of thing, and, and you know, I, I, got, I like your idea better. In fact, Just I... Wait, wait for the new well, ones to come out so they sell them cheap. I I'm mean, selling mine. You know, I the, mean, hell. The screen on this one, right, because the, the touch screen is half dead right now. Mm -hmm. And I got to, you know, you're saying that if people start dumping these next week, and I would almost wait. They like Because totally the first are. day they're going to start selling them for like 250 bucks. By like two days before they're selling the new iPod, they'll probably be even cheaper. But... The iPhone, when the touch screen doesn't work, is useless. So you basically, I can receive you would calls know. on this. <laughs> you would know, wouldn't you? You and your baby would know. Yes. So right. exactly. My advice is to wait and just get someone's secondhand iPhone because this looks like quite the process. It's miserable. It's really really difficult. I think it sounds kind of fun. Well, anyhow, guys, we want to see more of your lovely faces on screen, so please, please keep sending us in your video emails. Uh, remember to make the questions no longer than 15 seconds, upload them to YouTube, and email us a link with video question in the subject line. That way we'll know how to look for it and find it. Not that we don't read all your emails, because we do, but it's easier to <laughs> process them if we have a common denominator for all the video ones. Well, on that note, I think it's time for our Netflix-sponsored movie pick of the week. This one from our very own PA, Serafina. It's called Dark City. Ooh. From the director of The Crow, starring Kiefer Sutherland and Jennifer Connelly. Pretty people, Dark City is quite a mind trip. It's kind of a dystopian, noir, sci-fi, Kafka-esque treatment. Well, think of it as like Metropolis meets Blade Runner, released just a year before The Matrix, and the similarities are obvious. And in fact, they even reuse some of the sets from Dark City for The Matrix. So if you're a Matrix fan, this is like diehard stuff here. Now, if Dark City hasn't reached your eyeballs yet, you really, really should check it out. Because not only do they have the sets that they use in The Matrix, but it's a really good movie. And hey, do us a favor. If you're craving movie rentals without driving to the store, check out Netflix.com. 90,000 titles, including Blu-ray titles, you're probably not going to find at your local shop with 40 shipping centers all around the United States, which means deliveries generally happen in a single business day and shipping both ways free. Plans start at $4.99 a month, but as a Texilla viewer, you can get a free trial by signing up today at www.netflix.com slash Texilla. Questions? Questions! Do you want to ask about questions this time? Me? Yeah. But that's what you do. No, that'll be good. Me? Try. Really? Go for it. Okay. I've got to mentally prepare for this. All right. Um, Patrick, are you ready to tackle some more questions? How about tackle some tough tech questions? Tackle some tough tech <laughs> questions. Is that good? It was great. Was that okay? That was awesome. Email us if you want to see Veronica talk about 
tackling more tough tech questions in the future. <laughs> Nick, though, Nick has a question he's written in. He says he's decided to get an iPhone, but he's going to have to re rip all of his music as WMA files, which he uses for the music on his Zune, which are not supported by the iPhone. Now, he's trying to decide on if he should rip to MP3 or AAC instead. He knows that AAC supposedly has better audio quality at a given file size than MP3, and he's read articles that back that up, but he's also read articles that say there's no real difference between the two. So which should I use? Which is better? Is AAC better or MP3 and AAC equal? All right, Nicole, we're going to assume that the WMA files that you're talking about aren't DRM protected because otherwise it's going to be a super long process of ripping the DRM off and dealing with it. So, blah, blah. Which also technically is illegal. Which also, yeah, there's a little part of that, but yeah. Violation whatever. Of the DMCA. We'll just assume that you're Period. talking about DRM free WMAs. So, you are correct that it is widely stated that AAC files offer better audio quality than MP3s and also at a smaller file size. Whether or not you can truly hear the difference, though, is up to you, of course. Uh, iTunes will convert your WMA files to either AAC or MP3, depending on your preference. You can set that in the preferences somewhere. Uh, but here's my recommendation if you're switching back and forth between an iPhone and a Zune with any kind of regularity, I'd probably just stick with MP3. Hmm. So that's going to work no matter what, and right. the audio quality is still pretty decent if you encode it at a higher bit rate. Right. And um, although I'm pretty sure that the DRM-free AAC files from iTunes would play on your Zune as well. Because, and, okay, let me just, right. it, you, it gets confusing. You mean the confusing. AAC files created by iTunes that don't, not the ones like you buy from the store. No, although I'm talking the ones, about the ones you buy okay. from the store, not the ones that are Apple DRM protected. Right. Because if you buy the DRM-free tracks. That goes tracks, back like the protected WMA right, stuff. Right. It's, you can do things, but it's a Pain. But if you download the DRM free tracks, and it, they're, the, uh, they're the iTunes Plus tracks, right. I believe they're called. They have no DRM on them, but they are encoded as AAC. Those will play on your Zune. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's something for you, at yeah. least. As a matter of fact, any of, if you have CDs and you create AAC files inside of iTunes from those CDs, they should also they play. They should play, no right, because the they side. don't have DRM on them either. So in closing, yeah, he should probably stick to... 10p3. It'll work on yeah. more devices overall forever, most likely. It's the most universal file out there. Yes, in if terms you, of audio. If you want to squeeze files down, AAC's got AAC, a bit of an audio advantage. I just encode everything in mp3 just because I know it'll work down the line. So you have, like, in the last two days, I've encoded 110 albums in Lossless. You're doing Lossless, though. You are you obviously have tons more drive space than I do. I'm going so for, good for you. audio nirvana. <laughs> but we have a related question. From Kent. From Kent. Kent writes in, what affordable program produces the truest sounding MP3 or AAC file? I've got a CD by the Mexican artist Lucero who called Mi Destino. And I'd like to apologize to everyone who speaks Spanish in the audience, because now I'm going to say it has a track called Prisonera, and almost all of the converters trash Lucero talking in the first 40 or 50 seconds of the track. He's used it for years now as his test CD. Right now, I use iTunes to do the conversions because it's free and it does a better job than most or all of the programs that I've purchased. Are there settings such as bitrate and all that that hit the sweet point between size and output file and fidelity? I do all my conversions at variable bitrate, and I'm running 192 kilobits per second. I'm running out of space in my 60 gigabyte iPod and a lower bit rate would help. I have one of those four-year protection policies and a battery dying and an equal cost replacement 160 gigabyte iPod would do wonders for my storage. All right, Ken's in Richland, Washington. We can help. We can help. Prisionera. Can help. Prisionera. 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 I don't do I, I think one of us are close. The guttural language is like German, I'm, I'm, I'm good at. But uh, to answer Ken's question, um, exact audio copy is kind of considered like the, the sort of Windows standard. Um, lame. It's basically based on the lame encoder. DV Power Amp is my personal favorite application. It's free if you want an MP3 encoder for it. You're going to have to pay some money for the MP3 encoder mm, because mm -hmm. the Fraunhofer Institute gets money off of MP3 encoders because um, they came up with it, right? Pay, him, pay the money for the, you know, pay, pay the five the bucks money. for the encoder. <laughs> the uh, EAC is kind of a lot of people consider that as be sort of the gold standard. Anything that's built around the lame encoder. Um, Max on, uh, I haven't used it yet, but a lot of people have told me that Max, which is an OS X application, is pretty awesome for encoding on the Mac. You haven't heard of it either. No, I haven't. Yeah, as I found out about it the last couple days. Because um, huh. in the process of doing all of this lossless encoding, which I'm doing in, in uh, Apple lossless, right. th this huge debate over what does the best job of encoding came up. But exact audio copy, I personally i am a huge fan of DB Power Amp. Uh, Max on OS X. These are all great applications. How do you spell that? M-A-X? M-A-X. M-A-X. I'll put a link in the show notes. Okay. I'm and, interested uh, to know. It's interesting. In terms of compression, the best thing you can do is take the file, compress it at you know, 128, 192, 256, 320, try a lossless format, listen to it through your favorite set of headphones or your stereo, wherever you do most of your listening, and see if you can hear the difference. 
if you can't hear the difference. pretty easy to hear. Well, you know, I, I don't know, because some people, they don't hear, like, at me at 120K, K, I hear cymbals, and they sound like a, they have a horrible process effect, mm -hmm. and it's just nasty. A lot of people hear 128K files, and they're happy. A lot of people are happy with an AM radio. Go for it. Um, but listen, get out there, do the compression, listen, and see if you can hear a difference. Personally, though, man, I'd up the file size and get that bigger iPod. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, well, not everyone can get, I'd, you know. No argument. No argument. Because you got, you got some options. Lots of options. Try them out, Ken. Hope that helped. Hey, uh, we got one last email question from Gary. You want to read this one? All right. Are video card companies planning to come out with video cards that have HDMI ports? If they are, do you have some recommendations? And if not, when, if ever? Okay, Gary. First of all, there are read. HDMI video cards all over the place. Some of them have HDMI ports in the card. Some of them use a DVMI or DVMI. <laughs> That's a that's a new that video time. spec. Some of them use DVI to HDMI adapters. Um, more com basically, if you're shopping locally, you're probably going to see uh, you know DVI ports with an adapter. If you want to shop, you know Newegg, Tiger, you're going to find more cards that actually have the physical HDMI port in the card. If you have a special HDMI uh, a, to DVI adapter that comes with the card, don't lose it because some of them take advantage of unused pins in the DVI interface to pass through the HDMI audio. And if you use a generic DVMI, DVMI, I'm doing it again, DVI to HDMI adapter, it's not going to pass through that audio. You're going to want HTCP support if you plan on playing Blu-ray discs. Not all DVI cards support HTCP, so you definitely want to look out for that one. And really shop carefully when you're looking at if you want to run uh, HDMI audio through your graphics card. None of them support Dolby True HD or DTS HD. Not a problem for most of us. Um, not all cards, though, even support regular 5.1 surround sound. And before everybody emails, yes, Ozentech's HDMI extension, which is a bizarre name for extension. a product. Extension. <laughs> extension. You can tell that like URLs and product names are running out all over the world. Mm. They promised HDMI True HD or DTS HD audio support. It's essentially, it's really weird. It's an HDMI will go from your graphics card through the extender or the extension, excuse me, <laughs> basically another PCI card in your system, and then out to your graphics, your graphics to your monitor. It's like an HDMI pass-through board that adds in the audio for your PC. We just don't know when it's actually going to ship, but that'll add like 1.3 True HD. If you want the, sort of the 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 eight point surround, the 7.1 surround sound, it's coming uh, for your home theater PC. But we don't know when Cyberlink's uh, Power DVD Ultra, which is pretty much the only over-the-counter software you can buy to play Blu-ray or HD DVD discs, will actually support eight channels of True HD. It's 5.1 only for True HD right now. Oh, yeah. that was a lot of information. Sorry. That made my brain hurt. <laughs> my bad. But that's fine. We've got another question from Claudio in Brazil. Claudio writes in, I just came across a campaign that Mozilla is promoting on the web to set a Guinness World Record for the most downloaded software in 24 hours. Case in point, Firefox 3. Which rocks? Which rocks? How about giving them a plug? You can sign up to be reminded by email on dday at www.spreadfirefox.com. I love me some Firefox 3. I, it's, I'm happy. It hasn't been exploding on my OS X machine, which makes me very happy. No, it's been running really, really well, so I back this whole thing fully. I've been running it on Vista and XP, too. It's also running really, really well. I feel kind of bad because I've always been a really big Flock supporter, but it was just getting so bogged down with stuff. Like, it just was running really slow and it kept crashing all the time. So you're kind of and I love all the guys over at Flock. I really do, but I just needed a little change, a little Firefox change. <laughs> love you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Go <laughs> to <laughs> Firefox <laughs> now. Because <laughs> is it a real record if you sort of stage it? Yes. It's not like it's not like. Well, you uh, how, okay. Who's what do you the mean stage it? How well, many freaking record holders do you think are like just suddenly happen to have a camera and the freaking Guinness Book judges standing nearby? No, no, no before not that part. Something? Well, I don't know. I mean, how? Who, Every world who's record the current is staged. World no one just holder. accidentally does okay, a world record. Okay, good point. Record. I give up. I'm sorry for everyone watching. We live in your questions. Do us a favor and email us. Save me from from the wrath of Veronica. Techzilla at revision3.com is the email address. Tech out, product reviews, how to's. You ask us, we'll do it, but we need those emails. So don't be shy. Send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, you can send us a video question so we can see your pearly whites on screen. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. This week's movie pick is Dark City. So go discuss it in our forums and let us know what you think. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the latest episode of Pop Siren. Sarah Lane, the host, has found a nifty trick, the legendary Sarah Lane, to incorporate the music you're currently listening to on your Twitter feed. So don't Ooh. forget to check it out this week. More details up on their website, revision3.com slash pop siren. Excellent. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah. We've been a little nutty. Been a little crazy. A little mad. Until next time, you've been watching Texilla. Have a great day. Bye.
if you don't mind people maybe seeing your precious memories, recording them and turning it into some sort of surreal... Precious memories? Well, <laughs> More like your porny memories. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what... I mean, that's some people. That's... I mean, I don't... What? <laughs> Damn it. We can talk about sex tape, but don't relate it back to me. <laughs> that was all you. I did not do that. You brought it up at the top of the answer. Let's go to a message from one of today's sponsors that will hopefully still talk to us after today's episode. He's a big strong man with a child's mind. Don't you take his booze away. Shit. All right, let's do this. Really yo, ho, ho. <laughs> All right, five, four. You know, I think it's your turn to ask about more questions. Okay, okay, wait, okay. That This is shaking up my whole foundation of existence. <laughs> Hold on. I have to mentally prepare for this, get into my method mode. Are you ready? You can do it. I don't know if I had the strength of conviction. Come on. Okay. Bring it. Patrick, Veronica. are you ready for more questions? That was weird. That was kind of creepy, wasn't it? Yes. You ready? Yay! Yay! Woo! Three, two. <laughs> the man's counting Roger. in, Roger. Roger. I'm trying to bring a beautiful performance for you. He's counting in. What's the producer supposed to do? Blissful silence. Silence okay. is golden. We Sorry, got I'm it. having my Ari Goldberg moment.